Hello for the seventh in the. Can I record? Okay. Hello for the seventh in the history of your series. We are going to go over the um, secession of the southern states into the Confederacy um, during the first few months of the Civil War. <clears throat> okay. Now, in order to understand this, you have to understand three major things. Um, well, one major thing, but that major thing has several parts to it. The whole entire Southern Confederacy did not secede at once. A lot of people who aren't really good in American history just assume that right after Lincoln's election, all of the Southern states um, that voted for Breckinridge um, seceded. That's not true. Um, what happened, secession was mainly a gradual process. Um, of course, first, as you can see by the map, um, and luckily this map has when they left. Um, first group you have are the states that seceded before the attack on Fort Sumner, Sumter in uh, April of 1861. Now, now, um, <clears throat> now, these states include, of course, South Carolina, um, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Florida, um, Louisiana and Texas. All these um, came together and formed the Confederate States of America. Oh, excuse me. Sorry about that. Um, all these formed the Confederate States of America in February of 1861, right after Texas was the last state of the original states to secede before Fort Sumter. Um, in February 1861, they gathered in Montgomery, Alabama, and they formed the Confederate States of America with Jefferson Davis from Mississippi as their president. Now, um, after this, you have the attack of, on Fort Sumter in um, April of 1861. Now, in April of 1861, 1861 um, there is a federal garrison in South Carolina outside of uh, Charleston, I think. And the, um, the Confederates, the head of the Confederate government, um, they assembled an army and they took and captured the federal arsenal. So um, the job of, of course, the president at the time was to get it back. Um, the Union government sent um, under Lincoln troops to take back the uh, arsenal, and when that didn't work, um, they decided to go to war. Now, um, this is very important. Um, the president and the U.S. government call up arms and demand states in the Union that are still loyal to the Union um, call up troops to attack the rebellious sovereign states that have seceded. Um, this does not go well with Virginia. Virginia, um, even though it didn't really have a reason to secede at that moment before then, it really didn't like the federal government telling them what to do. Um, to the, the mainly Virginians, but also to others of the South that haven't seceded yet. You know, what is this federal government, who is this federal government think they are, um, saying that not only do they want us to assemble an army for their use, but they want us to attack our neighbors. So um, this causes uproar in the remaining four states that have not seceded yet. Um, Virginia, in April of 1861, they meet with a delegation at their state uh, capital and have voted on uh, secession. And with this, other states follow. Um, you have North Carolina and so you have North Carolina and Arkansas um, secede from the Union the month after Virginia, and then finally you have Tennessee withdrawing from the Union in June of 1861. Um, now, even though these um, have formed the Confederacy, 
Um, there are some states that want to join them, but are really border states. And Lincoln and the Union are going to um, really keep an eye on these border states and try to keep them in the Union. Uh, these, sorry about that. Um, these states are, as you can see from the map, Delaware, Maryland, um, what will become West Virginia. West Virginia does have an interesting story. Um, Kentucky and Missouri. Now, going back to West Virginia, West Virginia um, was in the north, in the western mountains of Virginia. Um, here, they did not have that many slaves because of a mountainous region, unlike the rest of Virginia, which had perfect soil for tobacco and all that other um, stuff they made. West Virginia was really mountainous and really didn't have that much of an economic hold for, you know, slavery in that region. So when Virginia seceded in April of 1861, um, several counties in the western end of Virginia seceded from Virginia and applied for statehood. And the um, Union government um, accepted their um, proposal and saw them as the true state of Virginia. The Virginia that seceded was not Virginia anymore to the Union. The true state of Virginia was West Virginia. Um, of course, this will all change in, uh, I think, like 1862 or 1863, when West Virginia finally applies for statehood and they become a state. Um, of course, you have other states too, um, mainly in Maryland, uh, Delaware and Kentucky. I don't know about Missouri, but mainly in Maryland, Delaware, Kentucky, and Kentucky, you have um, a lot of grassroots secessionist movements. Um, in the early days of the war, you have Maryland that wants to secede from the Union and become the 12th state of the Confederacy and join them. But because it's so close to Washington, D.C., Lincoln needs to have Maryland in Union hands. If the Confederacy were to have Maryland in their Confederacy, um, the White House would be right across from the Confederate States of America. Um, so Lincoln sends troops into these border states like Maryland and Kentucky, and they, he imposes martial law on them, meaning that these states are held by army occupation and um, really, there any secessionist movement in those border states have just been crushed by the beginning of the war. Um, although the secessionist movements have been crushed, um, you do have from the border states people going into neighboring states and joining brigades there. Like you have Marylanders joining uh, Virginian brigades, you have Kentuckians joining Tennessee brigades, and so on and so forth, you know. So even though the Union hung on to these border states and kept them in the Union, um, there were a lot of resistance within those border states. Now, everything wasn't all peaches and cream whenever the federal government was like, hey, we don't want you to secede, so we're imposing martial law, and you're not going to secede. Um, one thing with these border states, though, these this will have a very big problem later on when Lincoln wants to free the slaves. Um, even though these border states are still in the Union, all of these, uh, Missouri, Kentucky, West, um, well, not West Virginia, but uh, Missouri, Kentucky, Maryland, and Delaware in particular are still slave states. And they... Um, there will rise a problem, you know, like at the beginning of the war, like Lincoln says, well, I would have freed the slaves at the beginning of the war, but if I did, then the border states would have seceded and joined the Confederacy, and the Confederacy would have been stronger, adding, you know, one, two, three, four, four or five other states. So these border states are really important to um, the Union government. Um, so, 
anyway, that's basically it as far as the uh, secessionist movement goes.